Well, I got a strange one for you guys today. Belladonna of Sadness is an insane, hypersexual, and spiritual anime film that was released all the way back in 1973. But trying to call it an anime by today's standards might be kind of confusing, as in, what you picture as anime now is absolutely not how this movie is presented with all of its still frames and watercolor paintings and just strange imagery that you're just not used to seeing these days in a lot of films. Its animation varies from panning shots of still images to absolute batshit insanity that makes you feel like you're going through an acid trip into hell, but hey, it was the 1970s, so maybe you were. There is dialogue in the movie, but a lot of the film is just pure visual storytelling with an absolutely incredible soundtrack in the background that enhances the emotion of every single scene, and I think that was the point of this movie more so than anything else. Yes, it does tell a story, but this is the kind of artwork that is attempting to make you feel something, whether that feeling is pure dread, uncomfortability, or simply sadness all of which are deeply represented here. <laughs> I don't have much of a history with this film, and I don't know a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff, so I'm not going to claim that I understand all of its themes or what it's trying to say. I'm just going to treat this like any regular review and give you what I think the movie is trying to say. But I do want to say first that my first exposure to this movie was actually many, many years ago when I was a lot younger. I could not for the life of me tell you what channel it was on, but I distinctly remember being awake at like one or two in the morning, flipping through channels, and I just, I, I saw this. just so happened to be one of the wackiest and most psychedelic parts of the entire movie, and I had no idea what the fuck was going on or what I was watching, but I knew that I was enthralled by it. And since then, I always remember the name of the movie, Belladonna of Sadness, but I actually only very recently got around to watching it from the beginning in its entirety. It takes place in medieval France, I believe, where the leaders of the village uh, look like this. The main character, Jeanne, is sold off to be married, and even though she is a virgin at the beginning, right before she gets with her husband, she is raped by the Baron and his men. And with all of these sexual scenes in the movie, it's all done with this really wild artistic flair that could probably be really uncomfortable for a lot of people, depending on how you feel about this kind of subject matter. Like, it never shows the assault straight up like you would conventionally see it. It's done through artistic imagery and symbolism, so you know what's going on, but what you're seeing is not the exact act. So I, I guess go into it with your discretion. Basically, from what I see, Jean begins the movie as a purely innocent victim. Her own husband is even momentarily unable to take this information in and lashes out at her, choking her, before he realizes that he doesn't really want to hurt her, but he has that kind of built-up resentment from something that she couldn't even control. We're then introduced to this idea of the devil, and the devil meets with Jean. But the interesting thing to me is that the devil always refers to himself as being her, or a part of her. And this whole film takes place in a time where witchcraft and superstition were at an all-time high, and there's tons of scenes of demonic imagery here as well. I don't know if this is meant to be a literal devil or just a darkness within the main character that's crying out for some semblance of power. That there is this rage and sense of vengeance against her oppressors and that by giving into that desire, well, that's perhaps a way for her to gain that power and no longer be a victim. I also thought about how it might reflect how society viewed the lower class people and specifically women as well because the witch trials themselves and all of that kind of stuff is very prevalent here, that it's those in power and those the head of society that condemn her from the very start and treat her like absolute trash. So, in a way, they label her as a villain, and then she inevitably becomes one for them. It's as if she was kind of destined to be a product of what they made her out to be from the start without actually allowing her to be anything on her own. Because the devil here wants her to embrace him, and as she does, she grows stronger, and so does the devil. And this is also done through many different exposures to sexual acts and strange animation that definitely lets you know that something erotic is going down. 
So she gradually becomes more powerful as she submits to this demonic entity and the impulses within, and the village around her begins to fall to shambles at the same time. It mentions that there's war, it mentions that there's the plague, poverty, all that stuff, and eventually Jean finds herself fully embodied into the historical ideals of a witch and also becomes very well-versed in the healing properties of the plants around her but it's much more interpreted as healing magics. But by doing so, she actually helps to heal a lot of the town. And I think that that's where the title of this movie comes into play, because her name is not Belladonna, which I expected it to be. So I had to look up what Belladonna meant. And this is really interesting, because Belladonna has two different meanings. And both of those meanings, I feel, really coalesce into this movie. One is a fair lady, or like a maiden, or like a beautiful woman, something like that, okay? And it's also the name of a plant, but a plant that can be used for healing, but also if you take too much, it can be deadly. And that is directly shown during the healing portions of this movie. And the same way that she herself is kind of depicted, too. A beautiful woman, but pushed to the brink, finds her power, but then is perceived as a deadly witch. But perhaps that's only because she found any power at all. In the eyes of society and those that rule, the belladonna was too much, therefore became deadly to them. At least that might be one way of looking at it. I don't want to spoil the entire movie for you or anything, but I do want to mention these trippy scenes once again, because um, you really got to be prepared for them. Uh, if flashing lights bother you, if it makes it hard to look at or you have epilepsy or anything like that, uh, yeah, there's definitely a sequence where I feel like the flashing lights go on way too long. Even I had to look away from the screen just because it really bothered my eyes. I don't know. There's also a gigantic artistic orgy <laughs> scene that happens with some of the strangest and probably unintentionally funny bits of animation and artwork that I have ever seen. I really can't show you any because of YouTube, but more than half of them could probably be used as a meme. There's one with two guys with their dicks wrapped around each other, kind of like snakes. There's another guy. I think he's fucking an alligator. I don't really know what's going on. It's just a big, massive orgy. But I can tell that the movie definitely has themes of abuse, victimizing, and rebellion, all wrapped up into one extremely unique presentation that it, you're not going to get anywhere else. It's a hard movie to recommend because of its style specifically. If there was any definition of an art house animation movie, well, this would be it by far more than any other I can think of. Also, the heavy sexual themes, the demonic themes, the imagery, rape scenes, well, um, you know, that might set you back as well. But if you can get past all that and you want to see something extremely different from what you're used to and give you something that will make you think for a while, well, I say then check out Belladonna of Sadness. So anyways, guys, if you have seen this movie, what do you think about it down below? How do you interpret the movie? This was kind of my first time watching it start to finish, so these are my initial thoughts. I just watched it earlier today, so let me know what you guys interpret it as down below if you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, are you interested in checking it out? Let me know what you think. Uh, also, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please give it a like and a comment to help it in the algorithm. Please, please, please. I'd appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel on a deeper level, I would also deeply appreciate it. I have Patreon, channel memberships, merch store, and all the various social media links where you can follow me down below in the description. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.